Hi guys, welcome to this Microsoft Access module on tables and filters. In this module, we're going to look at how to filter and sort information in a table, how to bring information from other databases and Excel spreadsheets into your database, how to also link Excel spreadsheet data to an Access database, and we're going to look at doing advanced filters and filter by sort. But first of all, a straightforward sort. Each column in Microsoft Access has a small triangle pointing down, which will give you access to filters and sorts. So this first one is just going to be a straightforward A to Z sort on the surname column. And you can see that that is sorted now. And these records moved along with that. If I went to the city column and did an A to Z sort, it's now sorted by city. It has overwritten the surname column. If I go back to first name and A to Z, that is now sorted alphabetically A to Z and it has overwritten the city field. So basically you can only sort by one column at a time. Now if you want to remove a sort, you click this little button and it takes a sort off. If you want to sort by more than one column, you have to create a query to do that. Now in addition to sorting, you have got the option of doing filters, text filters, or you can do similar to what you can in Excel, use these tick boxes to add or take away things and it will give you the result. However, what I like to use is this feature. If I want to see every record for Bradford, I would simply click on Bradford and then use this filter by selection option, click that, equals Bradford, and then I just see the Bradford records and then if I click toggle filter that will bring everything back but if I keep clicking toggle filter you can see it's just basically doing exactly that toggling between the two to clear that filter off I need to go into advanced and select clear now in that advanced filter option you have filter by form advanced filter sort and so on I'm going to have a quick look at filter by form the name sort of dictates that that you would do this on a form but you can actually do it at table level and it gives you multiple sorts multiple filters so for example if i wanted to see all the smiths that lived in bradford i select my criteria i toggle the filter and it gives me the three people that live in bradford that are called smith if i go back to the advanced i've got options there um, to clear that filter or i could have toggled that another filter option in this list is the advanced filter sort which looks a bit like a query which we'll come on to later on in a different module but for example there I could um, drop surname down and city by double clicking and then I could say um, Smith same thing really and then Bradford as a criteria and when you click away you'll get these little quotes either side which means Access recognizes that as a text field and then you toggle the filter and you can see the same sort of information and then again I'm going to clear all filters. So that is basically how you sort a column and filter a column and as I've already said you would need to create a query if you wanted to sort say for example by surname and then city and then maybe date joined or something like that multiple column sort. Now moving on um, so the next feature is how do you get information from another access database into this database now you have um, a tab at the top there that says external data and you can bring things in through export things to these or you can import things through this wizard on this important link so that's export that's import so if I select from this list, I've got um, an Excel file that I will bring first off. So I'll click on that one. It's looking for it. So I'll browse for where it is. And it is in examples, access 18. And there it is, import data. It's already set up. We'll click on that. And then it's got options here to just import the data, which I'm going to do, but later on I'll do the link option so you can see how that one works. Click OK. 
and it starts off the wizard. So there is only one table, or one tab in that Excel spreadsheet, it's called staff training and this is the fields that are there and that's the information. So I just follow the wizard through. Next, it asks me if the first row is uh, the column headings. Yes, they are. they are. You may well have to edit your Excel spreadsheet if you're going to bring it into access like this. I go next and then it gives you the options to set the field types and, and whether they're indexed or not. I'm just going to leave that because I can do that in table design when I'm in access. So I'm just going to keep going forward. It's asking me for a primary key and it's actually showing me one there and I a unique identifier. You don't have to have a primary key so I'm just going to say no for this example and then go next and then it's asking me to name this. So I'm going to get rid of that space and just put um, TBL in front of that. Quite a few people don't name it with a capital T, but I like to look at it like that with a capital T, a capital S and a capital uh, T again for training. It's easier to read, I think. And then finish. And if I'm going to do that again and again, you can save the steps. Um, on my own database, I've got some export steps, which I do save. But this one I'm not. I'm just going to close that. And then you should get that table coming in. And if I open it, that's not it. This one. So this is the data that was in that Excel file. So that is quite a quick process, but if I show you um, another process, a copy and paste, not copy and paste process, you can see how more difficult that would be, even though it's not impossible to do. So in this example, I'm going to open that Excel spreadsheet and copy it and paste it directly into a new table. So if I just go file, uh, open, import data has just been opened there so it's there I'm not going to take the headings I'm just going to take the data copying the data going back into access and I'm going to click on create table now when I did this before I did it in table design but I'm now going to paste this into a new table and just control V paste and then it pastes all the data in which is very quick I agree with that the problem is all your fields are not formatted. So you would now have to go through either like this, type it manually, um, if you can remember what they're called, and so on. So I've got two ID fields there. So this must be, so it's already given me a unique identifier there, primary key. So this is now gonna have to be something else. Um, I'll call it staff. ID and so on and so on and then after all of that I would still need to go into design I'll just leave it okay as that to set the data type so I think the whole process of doing that is long-winded and not really of any use and it's not something I would do but if you don't know how to create tables and it's the first time maybe it's of use to you to get you going so let's do this um, wizard again to link an Excel spreadsheet. So this time I'm going to still select an Excel spreadsheet, but I'm going to pick the bottom option, select the same one, import data, open, and then OK. So this is going to give me this similar wizard, but it's slightly different. There's not as many steps. The first row is still the header and go next. I'll just leave it this time and then finish. It didn't give to change all the um, data types. Click OK to that. And when it comes in, you can see that the symbol is different. It's got an Excel symbol with an arrow on it, which is indicating it's a linked table. And if I open that, it shows me all the data there at the bottom. You can see that um, rubbish that I've typed before. But I'm just going to do that again. I'm going to open that file and type some more rubbish and see if it picks it up. Oops, didn't want that one. So I've now changed that data. If I go back into access, that should have picked it up and it has done. So you've got this linked. So you get the best of both worlds here. For those of, those of you who don't like to move directly into access straight away, you can use Excel, drop it into um, an access database as a link table and then have all the functionality of 
access as well as all the functionality of Excel, so you work in both ends of the, of the set if you like. Now the other option I've got is to bring in um, database objects so I could get a table or a query or a form from another database which is what I'm going to do. This wizard will bring this in in the same sort of way. This time I'm going to browse for um, a table in this database so I open that database and I'm not going to link it I'm just going to copy it in basically so I click OK it should open up and show me all the elements in that database so this, this has only got one table but if there were queries and forms etc they would all be there I can click OK to that and the whole um, table I'm not going to save the import steps the whole table will come in and become part of this database staff details it was and there it is staff details with all the data so because um, you haven't got undoing access quite a lot of the time you can start um, editing and playing around with a table and, and changing data types and things like that and you can cause some catastrophic damage to a table if you do that if it's a live table so you can actually practice by opening a brand new database using the import wizard bringing the tables queries and forms and all the elements into a new database and then mess that one up basically and do your testing and trialing and see if things work on that one and then if it doesn't you haven't damaged anything you can just import it again and delete the one that um, you brought through and that you have subsequently messed up so i'm just going to delete that one off now i don't want that table uh, i don't want this one either so I'm that one and what was the other one was it staff training was it that one yeah i'm going to delete that one as well because these are no longer needed for this and we should be back to the database where I started from ready to move on to the next section which is how to create queries but that is the end of this section on tables four modules altogether there are four videos of how to do basic tables and filtering and sorting and such forth so thank you for your time and hopefully I'll see you again on the next session